We are very proud to have Marianne Rossbach with us today. Marianne is an award-winning math teacher at Sunrise Valley Elementary School in Reston. Hi, Marianne. Hi. So you recently received, I'm going to look at my notes here, uh, an award, the 2015 William C. Lowry Mathematics Educator of the Year for the elementary school level by the Virginia Council of Teachers of Mathematics. That's quite an honor. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it so is. what was your response when you heard the news? Well, I was uh, totally surprised, totally surprised. Um, I would never have expected such an honor. Um, I work in a school, in a county even, with so many wonderful mathematics teachers and um, to be recognized for this is uh, really pretty pretty amazing. So I'm humbled and honored. Congratulations. Um, and so you are a, as I said, a sixth grade math teacher at Sunrise Valley. You also are the math lead teacher and you help train other math lead teachers around Fairfax County Public Schools. So what is your approach to help them maximize their effectiveness in the classroom? Well, um, I've been really fortunate over the last several years to be involved in um, in supporting mathematics instruction, both as you said in the school and um, throughout the county. Um, my, I kind of have a three-pronged approach. I mean, first of all, I want to be extremely affirming with um, any of the teachers with whom I'm working, um, and of course, engaging in what I deliver and uh, supportive. And what I mean is that. Um, you know, teachers come to um, workshops that I'm running or courses that I'm teaching or co-teaching with so much different um, experience and, 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 you know, broad backgrounds. And I need to make sure that I um, am welcoming everybody who's working with me at that given time, um, make sure that I make them feel good about everything that they're doing in the classroom with their children uh, with regard to math instruction um, so that what we do learn or the work that we do do in the, in the sessions um, are attached to already wonderful things going on. Um, now I have two elementary aged kids and one of them I really have to nudge when it comes to math. So I'm wondering what sort of strategies do you use with your students to get them really engaged as you, as you mentioned earlier, um, getting the kids engaged in, in math and really interested in it? That's a great question. And engagement is, you know, one of the big buzzwords now in education. It's something that um, that's probably come up in many, many interviews and on this uh, new show. Um, first of all, I need to make sure that when those kids come into my room in the beginning of the year that I have welcomed them into um, a supportive, positive, and fun learning environment. So they're going to, they're going to um, be much more mo motivated to learn and to push through sometimes difficult times um, in math if they feel like they're part of a math community and that um, they're grappling with their classmates on new concepts and processes and digging into problems and projects um, in a place where they can always get help, where they can ask questions, where they can take risks. That's really important. And um, along that, that pathway, I'm also building those relationships with each individual child so that when they do uh, hit a bump in the road, when they do feel like they um, either just don't care about math or they're <laughs> struggling in math or you know for whatever reason they right. may be um, having motivational issues that I, that I have that relationship and I can meet them where they're at and work together to get them on track and the other piece is just uh, making sure that they're involved in um, highly engaging um, relevant challenging math tasks and projects um, that if the kids are actually trying to um, solve problems and learning and using the math to do that, then they're going to be mo much more motivated than if they're just walking through a set of skills lessons and learning mm -hmm. procedures and just doing worksheets. So it's, it's, it's that content, that rich content that, that, that's project-based and that's um, um, real relevant math that, that tends to help with motivation as well. And since we're talking about motivation, I'm going to move to homework because sometimes that's a little <laughs> bit of motivation needed for parents and for the students. Right. But solving math problems today, mm -hmm. the process for doing that may be a little bit different right. um, than for what parents may be used to. So how would you advise parents that want to help 
their kids with math yeah. at home, but they're not quite sure what the right process right. is. Right. Yeah, homework, homework, and that you know, homework <laughs> can be a challenge. And you know, I think a lot of times teachers have this, you know, this glamorous idea about homework that it's it's quality time that parents and kids will spend together, and they're uh. gonna the kids will be telling about all the wonderful <laughs> things happening in the classroom and how much they love their teacher and everything that's going on. And you know, a lot of times homework can be really stressful, actually. Yes. And um, you know, not only for the reason that you've brought up that sometimes the the um, task is hard or challenging, but mm -hmm. um, but also the kids and families are pressed for time so um, I try and coach my parents early on in the year you know back to school night and through um, my math mania newsletter and different different venues to um, to be a coach for the child and um, not necessarily feel like they have to be a math teacher and to give um, themselves permission and their kids permission to stop if the math is too challenging or if, um, if it's causing frustration and um, then to go advise son or daughter to um, to make a point of going back into school the next day and and talking to the teacher and getting okay. help um, but that coaching piece you know the same thing that we're trying to do in the classroom with our kids by instead of always telling them how to do things but through through good questioning asking them to actually find out what they do know what what um, math understandings they do have um, what they understand about the problem at hand and then working from there um, can help the kids move forward in the homework if um, if they're having trouble so okay. and what made you fall in love with math that's a good question um, you know I had a very traditional mathematics um, education um, you know I went to school through the 70s and 80s um, so I was always good at math and enjoyed math but it was um, you know quite traditional um, you know teacher stood up and showed us procedures and we um, you know completed homework and took a, took tests based on those procedures um, and that was fine but um, like I said I enjoyed math but it was while I was in um, my teacher education program at James Madison in the 80s that um, I had a couple fabulous professors who were um, I'd say really enlightening us about more progressive ways of teaching mathematics and that's basically through helping kids through discovery and hands-on experiences um, constructing knowledge and um, building deep understandings about mathematics um, really digging into process and the whys behind mm -hmm. the hows and um, in fact in those early you know junior year of college I joined the NCTM and uh, was already going to conferences. Tell us what the NCTM is? National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, okay. so the National uh, um, Council which basically sets the pace and the tone for mathematics instruction. So um, so that's where the love affair began and um, so when I entered into my graduate program at the University of Rochester I was only in my second third year of teaching and um, had a focus in mathematics and mathematics instruction so the love affair was well solidified so. awesome awesome and after 27 years of teaching what's keeping you in the classroom or maybe it's the love affair is still going on it's it's the love affair. <laughs> I, it's really just and just being with children in general um, you know I have the privilege of teaching um, other subjects it varies year to year depending on my okay. sixth grade teaching team or where I'm at but um, I just love being with the kids um, I've had the honor and the privilege of working with other teachers and that experience and that give and take, you know, getting ideas, giving ideas, teaching, coaching, um, which is wonderful and I have that dimension to my, to my wonderful professional life, but it's the kids that keep me coming back every day. I just, they're, they're fun, they're funny, they're delightful, they're crazy, they're <laughs> um, brilliant and, um, you know, every day is a new day, so I feel like 27 years. Hard to believe. Well, they're very lucky to have you. Thank you. Thank you thanks. so much for coming in. Well, thanks for having me. My pleasure.